Hello, my friend. I'm Robbie from AccentAdventure.com, and I've been learning to speak with a British accent for almost four months now. And now is the right time to conclude this accent learning mission, so that I can start revisiting my general American pronunciation and work on certain details of it to make it more native-like. But here's what I've learned during the last 16 weeks while I've been practicing the British accent. My fear prior to this mission was completely unfounded. I've got to admit that when I committed to learning the received pronunciation, I was a bit apprehensive in regard to my ability to master this version of English pronunciation. Well, I didn't doubt I would be capable of putting on something vaguely resembling the British accent. At the end of the day, it's all down to how much you practice. Personally, I believe any foreigner is capable of achieving a decent level of any target English accent, provided that he or she works with their pronunciation on a regular basis for a long period of time. What I was unsure of was my ability to speak fluently with the British accent because I was under the impression that this particular accent was very blurred and hard to understand. It turned out that nothing could be further from the truth, my friend. The moment I started practicing the British accent, I realized that its distinct sound actually makes it quite easy to learn. So, British accent is easy to learn because it's very distinct in the first place. It might make much sense, but what initially seemed like the biggest obstacle turned out to be the very reason why I could learn this English accent quite easily. Of course, I'm not claiming to have achieved a native-like mastery of the received pronunciation. What I'm trying to tell you is that it's much easier to resemble an English sound when it's very distinct and it's 100% clear what way it's got to be pronounced. Let's take, for instance, the R sound. It's quite simple and straightforward. Whenever possible, simply don't pronounce the R sound. Simple as. It's especially obvious in word endings. So in words like whenever, word, learn, year, and a host of other words, you simply omit the R sound, which is great for those foreigners who might have certain difficulties pronouncing the R sound the American way. For example, another British sound, T, is also very distinct. Once you make sure to pronounce it this way, and then stick with it, you'll add that distinct British sound to your accent, and no one is going to have any doubts as to what English language pronunciation you're trying to put on. So, basically, my point is the following. Once you learn the key British sounds, and then speak, by applying them onto your spoken English. All that feeling of the British accent blurring all words together, thus making it hard to understand, is simply going to go away. Because it's you who's speaking that way, and quite obviously, you'll know what you're saying. On top of that, once you start learning to speak like a Brit yourself, you'll find it easier to understand the received pronunciation and it's going to be a win-win situation from both speaking and comprehension point of view. During this accent learning mission, I learned an awful lot thanks to those YouTube and my blog commentators who made the effort and commented on certain imperfections of my attempted received pronunciation. You see, the problem is that reading about it and trying to put all that information into practice is one thing but reading a correction of a specific sound within your speech is an entirely different story altogether. For some reason or another, it's so much more effective when someone else points out a particular thing you should improve upon. It kind of makes it crystal clear as to what exactly you've got to work on. And here's a typical example of how a particular comment helped me improve my British accent. I received a comment on one of my YouTube videos saying that I didn't pronounce the word confident the right way. Back then, I would have pronounced the word as confident, with the letter O pronounced as the open mid-back unrounded vowel A, and the letter E pronounced quite distinctively as E, confident. The commentator 
pointed out that the letter O should be pronounced as O in this word, confident, and the letter E should be almost silent, confident, confident. After reading this comment, I looked deeper into how the letter O is generally pronounced. I paid extra attention to that sound when listening to British speakers during my accent practice sessions, which I wouldn't have probably done otherwise. And as a result, I figured out that the letter O is indeed pronounced as a distinct O for that matter in a lot of words, unlike the American English, where it's pronounced as the open mid-back unrounded vowel O. Furthermore, this comment led to another realization, namely, British English intonation is also different, especially the word endings, where a lot of vowel sounds are actually omitted. I personally wouldn't have noticed it, if not for that commentator having pointed it out to me that the letter E is not to be pronounced so obviously in the word confident. It's actually confident, so you omit the E letter. So I'm really, really thankful for everyone having contributed into my British accent development over the last few months. And I really, really appreciate it, my dear friends. And now, about what I'm going to do within the next few weeks, I decided to review my general American pronunciation and also fine-tune my received pronunciation before I embark on my next English language accent. Well, to be honest with you guys, I've been doing regular American English practice while on this mission. But I know for a fact that there are a lot of gaps to be filled in terms of how I speak with the American accent. And I'm going to dedicate the next few weeks to that. Then I'm going to go back to my British accent again, so that by the time I'm starting my next accent learning mission, these two accents, American and British, don't pose any problems whatsoever, and I can switch between them at any time. Okay, my dear friend, thanks for dropping by, and I hope you've enjoyed following my blog so far. Have a good one. Bye-bye.